During the course of the pandemic, like many others, my friends and I began to play D&D and our other favorite role-playing games online. <clears throat> While we appreciated the many great apps, tools, and resources available, we really felt there was something missing that would best support our group and our playstyle. My friends convinced me that we should develop our very own app, suited to our needs with the thought that if it worked well for us, others might enjoy it too. We've been using the Dungeon Management Hub, or DM Hub, for almost two years now, and have grown to love it. We are eager to share it with the hope that it might suit your playstyle and your group as well as it does ours. In this video, I'm going to give you a bit of a whirlwind tour of DM Hub and all of the features that it employs, and try to give you a feeling about why we love it so much. DM Hub is available from our website, dmhubapp.com, as a free download. Once installed on your Windows PC or Mac, it will stay up to date automatically. After you log in, creating your first game in DM Hub is easy. You just hit the play button and you hit new game and then if you're going to be the game master you hit host game and you can give a few basic details about your game like the name, you can choose some, some cover art, a uh, background that will appear, uh, and then you can um, put a, uh, a, a, a description of your game. Um, Hopefully, uh, you might be a bit more thoughtful than me uh, if, if you're creating a real game uh, and not just a demo. Uh, and then, importantly, you get this invite code. And this is the way that you share your game so others can join. Uh, and so you just uh, copy it to the clipboard. And I have uh, another, another login that we're, we're pretending is on another computer uh, with another account. And they're going to join the game. So for them, they would just go new game and they would hit join game. Uh, they can paste in the invite code. Uh, it gives the name of the game and, and they can click to join the game. And now they've joined the game, uh, they're, they're ready to launch it just as, as you are on your screen. And I'm going to show you next what happens when you, you launch the game and begin playing. One of the first things you might want to do as a game master in any role playing game is to import a map into the game and get it going ready for your players to go on a fun adventure with. Uh, so we decided that this was something that we really wanted to get right in DM Hub. Uh, and it was interesting. I was talking to one of my friends and uh, who was, who's developing this with me, and he told me that a big frustration he had is that if he, impl uh, if he added a map uh, that he imported that someone had drawn, uh, that he would have a lot of trouble if they had added a grid to the map, like you can see this map has a grid, that many of the tools available would really have trouble lining up their grid with the grid that was already drawn on the map. And that struck me as odd on first blush, because I, I, I thought to myself, well, as long as the artist who's drawn the map has uh, has evenly spaced the grid lines, it shouldn't really be very hard. You just say how large, large the grid is, and the tool should be able to scale the map appropriately and superimpose the grid. But what I found surprised me in that it really wasn't that easy to, to get this right. Uh, and and all, all the tools that we tried and our own first attempt had this problem that you would you would maybe choose a uh, an intersection that uh, that is at one of the the tiles and then you uh, you specify the size of the tiles uh, and we do this by having you you show an opposite corner of a tile. So this this implies the size of the tile, and it tells me it tells me over here how large the tiles are. You'll see this map; it does not have tiles that are apparently uh, an even number of pixels. And many maps many maps are like that that you'll import because they've been scaled or whatnot. Um, but this looks pretty good. That uh, that uh, these these lines are right on. Uh, the problem is that while it matches up really well here. Uh, if I turn this on so I can see these the grid lines in in this cyan color, as the further and further we get away from the point, you'll see that we actually get uh, get uh, um, a lot of uh, difference to the point where they're not really lining up at all. And this this is actually a really frustrating thing to get right. He actually told me that he had spent more than half an hour on some 
on some maps trying to line them up with various tools before ultimately giving up. Uh, and even moving this about, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to get it right. Uh, so uh, we thought about this problem, and what we ultimately decided uh, was that there was a relatively simple fix, and that's that we simply, uh, we've, we've given two points, we simply ask you to put a third point uh, and we ask you to put that point on the opposite side of the map. So I'm going to put this third point down here. And DM Hub uses this third point to more accurately find the side of the tiles. Uh, and now we can see that uh, we can import this map and we can see that uh, it lines up pretty much perfectly. So DM Hub's understanding of where the grid lines are uh, pretty much perfectly matches uh, the, the artist vision. Uh, and then we can uh, get get this map. It uploads to the cloud so everyone can share it. Uh, and now we can add this uh, add this map to our game. Uh, we can easily create a player token on it. And you see that we can move this token about, and the token's position will align with uh, with with the grid lines, no matter where they where they go on the map. Uh, and this is great for our group. Really enjoys tactical style combat and exploration and so we really like having having uh, a, a grid to play on like this uh, and uh, you, you you can you can get many maps that are not gridded and then you can add whatever grid you want but often the artist will will put a grid which really suits uh, suits the map well it'll it'll have things like the grid will be lined up with the doors uh, and so forth now, after importing a map, like, like many other tools, DM Hub allows you to specify where the walls are of your map. Uh, and, uh, and it has a way of doing that. I'm, I'm not going to show that in detail. Uh, instead, what I want to show you next is that our group, we love, we love using many of the great maps out there. Uh, we, we play many um, pre-made adventures, and we, and we like using their maps. But one great thing about, uh, about role-playing games is being able to improvise, being able to create your own maps. And we really wanted a tool that would allow you to not only import maps, but also create your own maps. So in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how DM Hub not only allows you to import maps, but allows you to create your own maps from scratch. One of my favorite things about being the DM in D&D is being able to create my own maps on the fly, to create my own settings and scenes for my characters. For my druid character to say that they want to turn into a rat and suddenly I create a sewer and a full map for it on the fly. I've loved being able to do this on pen and paper ever since I was very young, just, just take out the paper and draw, draw the map as the player explores it. And I want to be able to do that on my computer as well when playing online. So we decided that a fundamental part of DM Hub is that it would allow you to play, but it would also allow you to create maps. And we did find many great tools that allowed you to do this in 3D. Uh, and uh, I, I, I enjoy 3D video games, but for a tabletop role-playing game, I really like the feel of a nice traditional top-down 2D style. Uh, your, your mileage may vary on this, of course. So we have a nice 2D map maker built into DM Hub that will instantly build maps and your players will see them just like if, if you were drawing them on paper in front of you. Uh, and so we're going to start by showing you how to draw how to draw ground to fill your map. So I'm going to fill this map with with grass. So we have this nice lush grass filling the map. Uh, and one one thing that I uh, I find frustrating about many tools for building maps is that many of them begin by asking you how large you want your map to be. And the answer for that in DM Hub is well. To start with, we don't really know. Uh, ultimately, it can be as large as you want. And so we give these guidelines for how large the map is, but, uh, but, but these, these can be changed at any, at any moment in time. And what this map border does is this indicates how, how, uh, your player's view of how large the map is. So your players will not see anything. They won't be able to venture outside this space. They won't be able to move outside it. This outside of this space will not exist at all to your players, but it does exist to you. You can use it as freely as you want, and at any moment you can move the boundaries of the map and and grow the map uh, any time you want. 
Uh, and so you can you can draw some uh, basic round like that, and then we have a number of tools which allow you to uh, to draw terrain on your map. So I'm going to uh, to use you you have this palette of different terrain available. So I'm going to draw a nice little path. Uh, I think we're going to make a map with a little a little house in the forest, and we're going to draw this uh, this path up to the house. Uh, and you'll see that we support. Uh, so we, we, we support drawing terrain like this with these different brushes, and we have uh, an, an entire system for uh, for defining brushes. I'm going to put um, maybe maybe there's uh, this is a volcanic area. There's some lava over here, uh, and we'll we'll use we we'll use some some different brushes. Uh, somebody who's much more artistic than me can do a much better job than this. But even if you're not an artist, you can make a map that looks uh, that looks pretty nice, um, and Maybe maybe over here there can be some uh, some water. Uh, what's really nice is these brushes are all configurable like in a painting program. Uh, so you can control, you can make your own brushes, you can choose the tips, you can give them textures uh, and so forth. And what you can do is any of these settings, like if I often want to change the opacity of the brush, I can hit this and now the opacity displays over here. So I'm going to draw some water, but it's pretty shallow water. So I want my brush to be uh, to be kind of transparent uh, and and make it make it just look like this. Uh, and all of this terrain, you can import your own terrain. There's there's a button here that allows you to to choose an image, and you could import terrain. Uh, and you can also configure the terrain. Uh, so we're going to do something like we're going to actually make this water move move about, and you can play with these different settings. Uh, you can do things like you can actually change the color of it. You could you could change it to be a different color. Uh, there's there's many different settings to play with, and they will all instantly apply and instantly apply for uh, for everyone. Um, now I'm I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but if if you if you spend some time on it, you can really do a lot with making your scenes look very attractive. Uh, if probably if you're setting up before the session uh, and if you're if you're just doing it during a session you can you can still build something pretty nice uh, for your players to experience on the fly uh, so in addition to putting down uh, putting down terrain uh, we can also build buildings and we have a different tool, a building tool for building buildings. And you get you get to choose what the walls of your building look like, and then what the what the floor is going to look like. Uh, and so I'm going to make just some basic selections, and then we have a number of tools. But the easiest tool to use is just the rectangle tool. So I'm just going to draw. So it's going to be a house. So I'm going to draw a nice little rectangle here for my house. Maybe I'll put like an extra room out the back. Uh, maybe some extra rooms on the sides, uh, and I have uh, have a little house for my my players to go to go up to. Uh, and then um, what what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put a door on the house. So uh, so we have an objects tool which allows you to add different objects. And our house, our house wants a door. Let's use this this nice door. And the the cool thing about doors is they snap into walls, so you you don't actually make have to make an opening. You just you just leave it closed, and there we have a, a, a door. Uh, and this door can can open and close, and uh, and and the players will be able to see in once it's opened. We can also add some windows. What what house doesn't have a few windows? So we'll add add windows. Uh, and so so the house the house has has a few different windows. Uh, and we probably at this point want to uh, want to do a basic test of the map to see to sort of see what it looks like uh, if a player is walking through it. So we can uh, we can create a character um, and we can easily say that we want to show the token vision of the character, which shows what the player would see if the player was controlling this character. And we can walk around and we can see that we can see inside the windows. So DM Hub has has dynamic line of sight uh, based on based on uh, the map that you've drawn, and it also has map memory. So the character can't see this area uh, anymore, but remembers what was there at the time that they saw it. Uh, and then the character can actually go up to the door and open the door and 
and go inside and and then see the interior. Uh, and uh, you can uh, I'm I'm going to exit out of pretending to be the player. Uh, and you you can edit the door's properties and you can decide if it's locked or not. If it was locked, the character wouldn't be able to open it. You would have to open it for them. We've said that this scene depicts a house, and while while it does from our perspective, if we look at the player's vision, uh, the area of the house just appears black, which you can narrate to a player that it's a house, but it just doesn't seem very convincing when they see this black void. And this can even be a, a bigger problem if you're in a town and there's many houses and most of them you, you just have as, as rooftops, and the few houses that are explorable, they, they see the, the black void of unexplored territory and then then they'll of course want to home in on those houses uh, so in dm hub what we do is we have a system for having multiple floors and layers on the map so you can you can add this floors and layers panel and you can you can rearrange the ui i like putting my floor and layers panel up here but you can you can rearrange these panels however you want and by default a dm hub map comes with a ground floor and a roof what we're going to do is we're going to try to import an asset to use for the roof. So I'm going to get this rooftop I downloaded from 2 Minute Tabletop. Uh, I'll import it into our roof folder and it takes a moment to import. And then we have this new object ready to go. I'm going to click on the roof layer. Um, the the ground floor blurs out slightly, so the the roll the uh, the the layer that you're on uh, is is in focus. Other layers are slightly out of focus, and I'm going to I'm going to put this uh, this roof on top of the house, uh, and so now uh, when we we've put this on the roof layer, uh, when we look at the uh, at the player's vision. Uh, the way the roof layer works is any areas where they cannot see, it shows the roof layer if there's something available. So over here, this is just area that they, they just plain can't see because it's obscured. Uh, so they would just uh, just eff effectively see uh, see the sky there. Um, so there's black, but uh, but here they see the top of a house. And they can, they can look through the window, and you can see it cuts away what's in the house. They can even see through the back window there, back, back into the, the garden behind the house. Uh, and then, of course, they can, uh, they can go up to the door of the house and can open it, and that also cuts away. Uh, and then when they go inside the house, uh, they're now inside, and, uh, and, and everything within the house is revealed. Now, what, what we might also want to do is we, we as the DM can hide the roof layer so, so we, can, we can look at the interior of the house ourselves, or we can use this opacity slider to make it, um, to make it partially transparent. Um, this doesn't, doesn't affect what the players see, this is just for us as a DM what we, what we want to see. Uh, now, let's say that this house, we actually want to make it, uh, it, it has this really creepy dungeon underneath. Uh, uh, maybe this adventure has a secret and there's, uh, there's a dungeon beneath. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to find some steps down to the dungeon. Uh, and here, let's, let's use these steps. Uh, and we'll put the, the stairs over here. Uh, and... What what we can do is uh, is stairs are an object. So DM Hub has many 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 objects for you to put on your maps. And the thing about uh, the thing about objects in DM Hub is objects can have many different properties. So over here you have if you click on an object it brings up its its properties sheet. And these stairs, uh, uh, every object has a property called core, which contains just basic things like the rotation, any scaling, uh, anything like that on, on the object. Uh, the height, which, which controls its shadows and so on. Um, but you can add properties to objects. Uh, now, uh, stairs, we would really like it so that if they click on the stairs, the player goes down the stairs. So we're going to make the stairs into a portal. Uh, and we should give them a name and uh, they'll link to a corresponding portal also called stairs um, and we can make them unlocked which means the player can freely click on them and, and go go down the stairs uh, and then um, we, we could link this to another map uh, or we could put the, the next floor onto another area of this map but because we have layers in DM Hub we can just add a new layer 
uh, and we're going to call our layer the, we'll call it the dungeon layer, um, and we see the ordering of the layers. We don't want the, the dungeon to be um, at the top, we want it to be at the bottom, and we actually want it to be underground, so we're going to drag it below this ground line, so the dungeon is actually underground. Um, and, and we've clicked, and we see it's, it's completely black. Um, and we can, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to partially see the, the ground floor, and we're going to draw uh, a dungeon area for where, where the dungeon actually is. Uh, so I'm going to use the building tool again, um, and in drawing the dungeon, I'm going to show you some more features of the building tool, because we touched on it in building the house, but it can really do a lot more than what we've covered so far. So I'm going to draw a basic basement to start, um, and once I've drawn the basic basement, I can kind of switch to this, this layer. I've turned off the ground floor. We don't even have to think about anything above the dungeon. We're going to plan out our dungeon now. And, uh, and what I think we're going to do is we're going to, uh, to make it so that, uh, I, I think there might be, this might ostensibly be just a basement, and then there's going to be a secret passage and a dungeon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build out, uh, I'm going to use the brush tool, uh, and I'm going to, uh, build out a nice, uh, so I can, I can use the brush and, uh, and I can draw a passageway, uh, except that really looks, that really looks too wide and too, too regular. We want something that looks more cave-like, more cavernous. So I can undo in the editor easily and I can choose a different brush and I can, I can draw something like this. See how this, this gives me a nice, a nice cave-like look. Um, so there's, there's a cave going on here. Uh, and then I think that I'm going to have also, uh, down here, there's also another passage, um, and it will, uh, it, it will just, it will be more regular, it'll be straight. So you can see that you can quite easily draw, draw passageways very, very easily. Uh, and then we can say use even the, the circle tool, we can draw a nice, nice round room here. Um, and then we can draw walls by themselves. And what, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, show you how you can use object properties, um, to do, to do some cool things. Um, we're going to have, uh, maybe a, uh, a bookcase, um, yeah, a bookshelf. And we're, we're going to, we're going to use one of the oldest, uh, tricks in the book, which is we're going to have a bookshelf that is actually concealing a secret passage. And the way you can do this is pretty cool that we will delete this solid property. What we're going to do is we're going to add a door property to the bookshelf. So the bookshelf now becomes a door. Um, and so we can, we can hook it into the wall now and the player will see this book bookshelf in the wall and maybe its position will clue them off. Maybe it won't. Uh, and you could choose whether to, if they, if you choose to not lock the door, the player can click on the door and they will literally see the door open revealing what's inside. And we do actually need to, uh, it's important for doors to have this pivot set to show where the hinge of the door is. Um, I didn't do that, so it had that weird spin when I opened it. Now, now it will open properly like a door, um, and the player can click on it if it's unlocked, um, or if, if we chose that the player has to sort of tell you that they're examining it, then you could make it locked, and it would only open if you choose to open it, or if you unlock it first. Um, but, but this is how you can make a, uh, this is one example of how you could, you could make a secret passage. Uh, now, with, with our, with our building tool, um, I'm going to show you how you can, uh, you can, you can continue to, to really easily build out an attractive looking, looking dungeon. And I, I need to put the floors, floors and walls. So this is the tool when we want to draw floors, floors and walls at the same time. And they all merge together nicely like this. Um, and so why don't we draw that? And then maybe up here, we'll have a big, a big chamber where things meet. Um, and then, uh, since, since this is a dungeon, um, it's probably quite dark down here. Um, so we can, we can choose the light level and this is actually pitch black. Um, however, there is, uh, b because it would be inconvenient to develop a map in the dark, um, by default, we get, 
uh, what we call GM dark vision. If we turn GM dark vision off, we see what the players see, and you'll see it's almost pitch black, and we can make it completely pitch black um, if we want. And that's that's probably how uh, how it might be naturally. So why don't we why don't we make this this level completely dark? Um, and and you're going to see that when players come down here later, it's pretty interesting. Um, let's now let's see where the ground floor is, so we can line up our our stairs down here. So uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, some stairs, um, and we are going to line them up with the the stairs at the top. And just like at the top, we should give this uh, a portal, and we should give it stairs to link to the top. Um, and now uh, we, we'll bring we'll bring in some players shortly to show you what it's like exploring a dungeon in DM Hub. Um, but let's let's add a few objects to make this more interesting first. So let's add maybe some uh, some crates, some barrels, and things. So maybe that this basement is like a storage room, and we are going to put a bunch of these crates and stuff. So I can select all of these, and now what's cool is every time I press R, it like switches to one at random and gives it a random rotation. So I can easily populate this room with a whole bunch of uh, of, um, of crates just randomly, randomly scattered about. Um, and I guess to make things interesting, maybe in this basement area, there might be a little bit of lighting. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some, some light. Uh, and I'm going to use these wall lamps. And these wall lamps are cool. They automatically attach to the wall. So they have a special property uh, called snap to grid, which makes them snap to the wall. And you'll see that uh, that they they light up the room. You'll see that they uh, they cast these cool looking shadows on the on the crates. What's a creepy dungeon without some creepy monsters to put in it? DM Hub has a full bestiary populated with monsters. You can you can search for them. I'm just going to go with some basic zombies that we're going to put in this map. So maybe there's a zombie or two to greet them when they come in, and maybe this chamber has a lot more zombies to welcome them. Uh, the zombies all have uh, have full stats that you can see, um, and their their abilities are, are all recorded, and you can get a full a full character sheet for the zombies. Uh, and what what is a what is a, an adventure to explore without some some nice loot inside? So I'm going to put at least at least one treasure chest uh, right here, and I'm going to make sure that the treasure chest is actually filled with some um, some nice some nice gold. Uh, what are some some treasures for uh, uh, for uh, to go in here? Um, I'm just going to pick some some at random. You could be a bit more deliberate. Um, or there, we also have a way where you could uh, you can generate treasures from a random table. So I've I've actually regenerated this to have um, to have have this this necklace instead. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll add one more one more thing for them, for them to find. Um, and so so that's that's now available in this chest for them to, uh, to to get when they explore this this area of the dungeon. If we turn off our dark vision, we can see that the dungeon is is pretty terrifying. Without without any light, you can't even see that there's zombies. You just see these um, these few lit up areas with these bright lights. But other than that, it's it's completely pitch black and going to be pretty daunting for them to explore. Um, so. In addition, wouldn't it be cool to have some some bats flying around? Um, so we we actually have uh, an animated bat object here, and all of these objects. Remember, you can import your own objects if you want to import a um, a animated object. All you need is a video file. So I'm going to put down this bat, and what you can do, uh, and I am going to turn up the light for the purposes of this, just so you can see it better. Um, is uh, and it, it'll look nice and creepy for the players when when they're here. Um, what you can do is you can add a uh, a path animation, and this is where it's really cool that you can actually animate the map. Um, and so with our path animation property, we can actually set a path, and I'm going to just draw draw a path. And the bat will start flying around on that path, so it'll constantly just move. It'll be at the same same place for all for everybody at the same time, um, and it will it'll move around the map. And what I can actually do is 
uh, is I can set multiple paths. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually going to add um, add a few more bads um, because what what we can do is we can uh, we can add a little collection of bads and we can select all of these bats together um, or even get even get this one and we can uh, we can make sure that they all have a uh, let's let's make sure they all have a path together so we give them all a path animation and and this these edits apply to all of them so all of them are going to are going to fly fly around the map um, now they they look like they're in a bit of a squadron right now um, which probably isn't what you want um, but 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 don't worry we'll 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 uh, we'll improve on this um, so what what you can do is you can set a second path for them to fly on um, so you can say you can say let's let's make them also sometimes do this instead and every time they finish the path they will randomly pick whether they they continue the the path or whether they choose the other path but now now they're, they're basically like two squadrons um, and then uh, I'm going to set yet another path don't worry that my solution isn't going to be just make in paths um, what you can do is you can choose to randomly merge the paths um, and now they they choose paths basically at uh, as a random mix of the different paths um, the last remaining problem is that they still do end up converging on the same spot together at the same time um, so we can we can set this delay which changes the position in the path they are but we want to make it different for each of the bats so if I hold control it'll set this value but it'll set it r at a random different value for all the bats now we now we just see bats swarming around the room um, and they're pretty hard to see uh, against the gray background and they'll be even harder to see in the dark and and this is this is basically a feature they're meant to be they're meant to be scary right um i might though i might make the uh the floor just a bit a bit uh a slightly different color just to make them slightly easier to see and you can see that you can re recolor areas of the floor um of, of the floor like that um even even cooler we could do something very very similar um outside uh where we could get these butterflies and we could make a little garden in the back full of butterflies so let's put down a bunch of a bunch of butterflies let's select all the butterflies uh, let's scale them to an appropriate size together um, so all little butterflies uh, and then what we're going to do is you can see they're blue we're going to add an appearance property and we're going to randomly set the hue so that all the butterflies are a different color uh, we're going to add paths to the butterfly. We're going to use the the same technique where we uh, we we set the path. Um, we're going to add a second path. Um, uh, I messed that up. Um, we're going to set our second path, um, and then we're gonna set. Uh, you, you you probably only need two two paths really, but I'm gonna I'm gonna set a third one just 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 to be sure. Um, and then you get them to randomly merge their paths. You get to put them at a random delay, and now you have all these butterflies flying around. Remember, this is the edge of the map, but that's fine to have butterflies um, flying flying in and out of the in and out of the map. Um, it just seems more real to the players to make the world seem a little bit bigger. Uh, you probably want to avoid. I, I did make this butterfly slightly overlap the house. Um, and and like this, you can really bring your maps to life. And DM Hub even has the capacity to export your maps uh, to an image file or a video file. And since the butterflies, uh, the path always takes a, uh, the same amount of time, you can control it, but it's set to, I think, eight seconds. That means that you could make an eight second video or maybe a 16 second video um, of an animated map and it would include all these, all these butterflies flying about. Now that we've started to build out a scene for our players to play in, let's talk about how you can actually make your, your characters in DM Hub. So we made this, this little token before, which we didn't really do anything with. And now we're going to actually make it into a proper player character. So we're going to assign it to this player who joined the game, and we're going to go over to their view uh, and, and see what they see. Um, and we can see that they see their, their character, and they can access their character sheet, 
uh, and they can they can begin to customize their character. Um, so let's make a character who is a uh, let's let's make uh, a dwarvish uh, a dwarvish druid, and you can set up your character's base attributes. Uh, and so I'll just I'll just leave it at ten to accept the wisdom. I'll put it at seventeen. Um, they're a dwarf, so they're going to get two more constitution, which we'll see later. You can you can make choices for all the things like a dwarf gets uh, tool proficiency, uh, so you can choose that. And you'll you'll see their proficiencies are shown down here. You'll see they're resistant to poison damage because they're a dwarf. Uh, they can choose a background and get some background features. They get to to know a language. Um, and we're going to make them a druid, and let's say that they're a level 3 druid. Uh, and then uh, you can see uh, they, get, they get some skills as a druid, um, and they also, they also know some abilities, including, including wild shape. Uh, then, then we can uh, go and we can give them a name. Um, so we can we can type in a name, but we can also just generate a name for them. Um, there's a, uh, a, a a table that you and you can actually edit the table. Just about everything in DM Hub is editable, including the tables for for names. Um, and there's a collection of images we have, or you can just upload your own image. Uh, but I'll I'll just I'll just choose one of these um, to make it easy uh, for right now. Um, you can also uh, you can do you can make tokens these frame tokens that we provide. You could also just uh, import a token that looks like anything you want. It doesn't have to have a frame. You can you can select no frame. Um, you could do a top down token, uh, whatever whatever you you want it to you want it to look like. Um, so I'm going to make this little token for my character, uh, and you'll see that their character sheet uh, is all decked out with all of their abilities and everything I picked. Um, and you'll see you'll see I picked ten for everything. They have the the plus two, um, the plus two constitution. Um, and then I can uh, I can give my give my character some inventory. Um, so I'll press I and uh, and give them um, some items. So uh, they are going to um, to be searching a dungeon apparently. So um, we should probably give them a torch. Um, so we can put that in the inventory and then we can actually equip it. Um, and then we should also give them a weapon. So let's uh, let's probably give them um, some kind of a, a club or something maybe. Um, so they're going to have a club in their hands, um, and maybe they're going to have some leather armor. Um, uh, druids don't druids don't wear um, wear metal, right? Studded leather armor? Can the druid wear that? I'm not sure. Um, so uh, so. They're they're set up with all all of that, and you can you can give them you can give them additional gear. Um, maybe maybe he gets a healer's kit, and you can you can put whatever inventory items they have in here. Um, you'll see that based on getting uh getting his items, um, his action bar is populated out with different abilities he has. He can turn on his his lantern and it will illuminate to the correct distance uh, and he actually has his wild shape ability um, so I can actually cast wild shape and you can see it says he's got two uses of it so I will cast wild shape and it asks what what creature he wants to transform into and it, it gives a list of all the creatures from the bestiary uh, or all, all beasts um, uh, that that match the description. Of course, I think the rules say that you have to have seen the the creature before, so um, that's that's up to you to negotiate with your your game master. Um, and uh, th this does by default only show creatures that are of the max CR that that you can get because because it, it does fill up with a lot of creatures which which are probably not that interesting to turn into, but you you can if you want. Um, so just as an example, uh, he can turn into a riding horse. Um, and now now he can um, he can he can move move around as a horse. Um, and he has all the correct stats. Uh, if we go into his character sheet, um, the rules for wild shapes say that a mental stat such as wisdom are still taken from the character. So you see that he still has his 17 from wisdom, but a horse has 16 strength, so he gets the 16 strength of a horse. Um, so all of the wild shape rules are correctly applied. Um, he he gets abilities such as the uh, the hooves ability, the, the attack the attack of a horse. Um, and then when he's ready to switch back, uh, you can just choose to end the wild shape. Um, and and he turns he turns back into his character. He's used up one of his charges of wild shape. 
Um, speaking of horses, um, DM Hub, uh, DM Hub actually has pretty good support for, um, for horses. So if we wanted our characters to actually have mounts, we could put down a riding horse, um, and we can make this friendly to the players. Um, and a riding horse that is friendly to the players, it has this little saddle on it, meaning that he can actually mount the horse and now he can ride around on the horse. Um, and you can select the character, he can he can attack in any area around the horse, um, uh, following the rules of, of mounting, um, and then when he's ready, he just clicks this little unlock and he can get off his horse. Um, so th th this is something that m my friends and I definitely found is that um, playing with with mounts um, is often not not as fun as it feels like it should be, um, and we find that with this system, being able to easily get on your horse, move around on your horse, um, it it just makes it just makes mounts so much more satisfying. Um, so he is going to go and uh, and explore explore the dungeon. Um, I think that maybe maybe we'll give him one companion to take with him. So I'm going to create um, very quickly. Um, an elvish rogue. Uh, so um, an elf, uh, and he is gonna let's let's make sure he has some dexterity, uh, and let's make him a rogue. Um, and he will be a level three rogue. Um, and then uh, uh, I should I should give him an appearance. Um, so we have we have a few decent elf images. Um, uh, why don't we actually say her? Um, she's an elvish. I'm not sure she looks like a rogue, but that'll, that'll do. Um, and then we can generate a name for our elf. Um, Delosta Roper. Let's, let's, Rindra Rivia. Okay, I like that. Um, so, now, uh, we, we can give our elvish rogue a few items. Um, so she'll take a rapier. Um, and then... Maybe, um, uh, maybe because she's not, she's not such a smart elf, um, she will take a club, um, and and I'll I'll, uh, I'll 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 show you I'll show you why in a moment. Um, uh, she'll equip that. Uh, you will note also that uh, she has equipped the armor, and the armor class is correctly calculated, um, at a sixteen. Um, and his, his armor class also correctly calculated. Um, so our characters are, and I'll, for convenience, I will assign both of these to my one player, so my, my player can control both of these characters. Um, and I will also actually give her, uh, she would be pretty foolish if she didn't take a lantern as well, so I'll give her a lantern to take. Um, and so the two of them um, are going to enter into um into this into this house firstly and probably i would i would deck the house out more i would set i would have walls i would have doors but but um uh just just for this um i'm just making it a pretty bare basic house um and they will they will approach these stairs uh and they with a click can go down the stairs uh so that character went down the stairs and now this character also going to come down the stairs they both come down the stairs um, and what do they see beneath? They see this this room um, full of uh, f full of enemies. And um, I do believe that I forgot to to turn down the the lighting in the dungeon. So uh, the lighting should be all the way down here. Um, it's still got my DM dark vision on, but if we switch back to our player view, we'll see that for the players it's very dimly lit indeed. Uh, and so uh, they would probably want to immediately light their lanterns. And you'll see that these little little lanterns come on and it's really cool. You can see that they can they light up the um the 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 room around and you can see these these cool shadows as uh, as, as the lights go on the on the crates. Um, and I, I should note that you, you see these cool lanterns on them. Um, one one nice feature of DM Hub is my group really likes to role play and we not, like nice cool effects. There is a nice little emoji panel where you can show emojis on your character. 
Um, if if this dwarf didn't see some zombies down here and wanted to sweep up, he might he might pull out a broom and start sweeping up. Um, there's an entire emoji panel, and you can move the emojis that you use most often to your quick bar. If um, your character is very hungry, they might take out a knife and fork and start banging it on the table, um, demanding their meal. Maybe maybe if they were in a tavern. Um, but here we see that they see uh, they see a bunch of zombies, um, and uh, I, I I would like to note that these these crates these can all affect the the room and its properties depending on the crate solid property, and you'll see that the crates are set up to block movement. So if we go and we control these characters, you'll see that the dwarf actually has to path around the crates. It won't let him move through the crates. Um, so that changes the, the distance he has to move to get to, get to different locations. Um, and the crates are also set up uh, so that they don't block vision. But I could set this crate to block vision. And if the crate blocks vision, now, uh, now the players can't see what's behind the crate because there's both of them and they, they're sharing their line of sight because they're both controlled by the same person. They can see most of the behind, but they, they can't see they can't see all of it. Uh, so you can control a lot of different things um, by controlling uh, controlling the objects and and their properties. So we've arrived down in this dungeon and there's enemies. So um, in the grand uh, tradition of Dungeons and Dragons, you might tell your players to roll initiative. And you can do this as the dungeon master by selecting the, the tokens that you want to be involved in the fight. You can easily add more later if you need to and click roll initiative. And it, it, uh, it asks you to confirm like who you want to who you want to roll. So the horse it remembers is part of the party, and but but we won't include that in the initiative. So I'm demanding an initiative roll. It asks for the the zombies were selected, so it asks me as the dungeon master to roll dice for the zombies. Um, and I can I can click roll dice. I can adjust the roll if there's some rule that I'm that DM Hub doesn't know about or that I've homebrewed or something. I could change it. I could give advantage, disadvantage, um, whatever. And if there were certain rules, like if zombies had disadvantage on initiative, it would actually tell you that here um, and and make it show up by default. So I get my dice and I can um, I can just click roll dice, or I can I can have the satisfaction of flinging the dice across the screen. They're physics based dice. And they roll for the for the player. I switch to the player view, and you'll see that they rolled at exactly the same time. Um, and this is this is um, telling me that uh, I, as a player, have been prompted um, to roll for my character. And it's and it's because I have two characters that I'm controlling. It gives me the option to just like roll both prompts without any changes at once. So and then it'll automatically roll them at once. Um, and we see my rolls. I didn't roll nearly as well as. Uh, the monsters did. So the zombies get to go first. Um, and so the the DM, they see all the results of the rolls, and they, they if something went wrong, they could demand a roll to be done again, but otherwise they're ready to proceed. And we're in combat, we see the initiative bar. Um, we can like we can scroll back and forth to like see where everybody is at, but we can see that this is the, the current turn. Um, and so the zombies can start moving. And so I could uh, I could I could move my zombie, and y you can see the um, the movement, the allowed movement of the zombie is calculated, um, and the zombie can come up, and it can try to do a slam attack against the elf, and it it comes up with its its slam attack. Um, it it correctly calculates the roll again. DM Hub it tries to get all the rules right, but it doesn't force you into anything. So you can you can cancel this if you don't if for whatever reason the attack shouldn't happen at all you can um change the role uh you can you can do whatever you want to override its behavior um but then it rolls and then it calculates that we hit so it prompts to roll for damage and then um we we hit the damage roll and uh it it hit and the the poor elf um she's lost five hit points um and if we if we mouse over her it, it gives us a history of how her hit points have changed recently. Um, and again, you'll also see that, like I said, it, it shows you, because it's a zombie's turn, it actually shows us the movement radius for the zombies. Um, and you can see how far the zombies can run. Um, maybe this zombie decides to dash, so he can dash, and then um, you'll see that he's used up his action. It, this shows his action, his 
um, movement, his bonus action, and so forth. Um, and now you'll see that his movement has doubled, so he can he can run um, over to here. But then that would be the end of his turn. I can hit end turn, um, and now it's the elf's turn. So I'll switch to my player view. Um, and what my elf can do is uh, is use her rapier on this zombie. Um, so she slashes with her rapier. And she hits, she gets a critical hit, and we see a lot of dice, um, because uh, she got a, um, a sneak attack. Um, and uh, you'll see that DM Hub knows about the rules for sneak attack, and in the green text at the bottom, um, it, it tells us exactly why the sneak attack applies. Um, and so she gets all those extra dice. And if you said, well, sneak attack isn't meant to apply, um, there's some reason that that the DM made up, um, uh, or maybe maybe this um, uh, character, the dwarf, isn't really considered hostile. What, whatever the whatever the case, maybe the dwarf was up the stairs, so he wasn't within five feet. Um, you can uncheck the sneak attack, and it will just it will just say okay and accept it. So DM uh, DM Hub doesn't force you into anything. Um, but who who doesn't like rolling a lot of dice? Um, and so uh, so we we hit we hit the zombie, um, and the zombie. Um, of course, gets a uh, constitution saving throw um, to decide if the zombie actually um, actually dies or not. Um, and uh, unfortunately for the zombie, it's a DC 37, so I don't think he'll make it. Uh, and I will say that in this case, uh, I think we need to update our rules just slightly because he shouldn't actually get one because it's a critical hit, so his head probably got cut right off. Um, but he failed it anyway, um, and so now the zombie is dead. If you've made it this far through the video, thank you for watching, and we hope that you agree that DM Hub has some really exciting features to offer for playing D&D online. There's many features that we haven't even covered. Just as an example, I've set up my Elvish Rogue now to have a bow, and you can see she has 40 arrows. When she shoots her bow, uh, the arrow will fire, and uh, and now she will only have 39 arrows. Uh, and in, in accordance with D&D rules, 50% um, of the arrows she fires uh, disappear, they, they break, I guess, and 50% of them end up laying somewhere on the battlefield, and she can gather them later, and there's a convenient button provided where she can just gather up all of her arrows. Uh, likewise, um, you can place cover covering objects on the map. So if we get these crates from over here and we put this crate here, we can edit its properties and we can say uh, that, hey, this, this not only blocks light and blocks vision, it actually offers cover. Um, so we can say that, uh, that it offers half cover. Um, and now, if she tries to shoot, um, this will, uh, you'll see that she's, she's a slippery elf, so she can actually sort of, DM Hub has a resolution system where it says, well, she can kind of peek round, so she can avoid the cover, um, and here it'll, it'll have no cover, but if we added a second object and made sure that it also provided half cover, um, then, then when she tries to shoot, It'll, it'll show you the, the red line changes to a yellow, and this will provide half cover. And of course you can change it. Um, DM Hub just suggests things, and and c cover especially is a rule where it's, it's always debatable, but it's really interesting that DM Hub makes you raise the question. So uh, so so before at my table, we, we would probably just not even think about cover, we would just ignore it. Uh, no player is going to say to the DM, like, do I have to do I have to account for cover with this shot? But DM Hub says, well, there should be cover, and you, you now have to kind of beg your DM to be like, well, can I get around this crate? Is it really in the way? Um, and so on, and we find that really, really interesting and exciting. That it that it allows new new conversations like that. Um, likewise, I've set up this um, this dwarf with a, a fireball spell that technically um, a, a level three druid shouldn't be able to cast. Um, but uh, but we we have we have a whole library worth of spells and they're all set up. So you can see this comes with a, a, a template. So you um, you can shoot it and the zombies all have to make appropriate rolls and it tells you the consequence. I guess they were all very agile zombies. 
Um, so they made their, their throws and they all take half damage. Um, so we roll this whole chunk of dice, it applies, uh, the, the damage applies, one of them went down, so he now has to make a constitution saving throw to see if he survives, and he did, so he recovers back up to, to one hit point. Uh, and just, just, uh, there's so many, so many D&D rules which, uh, which, just get forgotten, or we, we've even had disputes over things where where people debated is this the correct rule, and then and then it's a, an amazing thing when we look it up and realize that yes, DM Hub was uh, was was right about the rules. Um, and when you make content in DM Hub, so if you uh, you can add your own classes, you can add items, you can add as you've seen terrain, you can add monsters, um, you can share it with others by using uh, this share content button. Uh, and this allows you to share, uh, you can select what you want to share, and you can describe it. Uh, and then it will give you a share code, which is similar to a game invite code. Uh, and I'm going to use one of those share codes. Um, I can put download content, and then I, I get a share code that somebody gave me. Um, so one one of our players has made uh, a, a tavern map. So Phantom has made, uh, has made a tavern. Um, I'm installing it now, it's been installed, and now I can go to the Maps tab, and I can go to his tavern map and start looking at it. I could, um, I could easily, well, maybe, maybe the, the players are done with their adventure, and now they've, they've come to the tavern for some respite. Um... Uh, so, so you you can see that DM Hub is is a pretty powerful tool. It's still under development, um, but we're uh, we're making fast progress and we're adding new features every week. Uh, and we're at a point where we're really interested in getting more feedback and more people uh, hopefully getting involved with wanting to uh, to see our vision for DM Hub uh, and create content for it. Uh, almost everything in DM Hub we have tried to make as configurable. As possible. So uh, I think I mentioned that any objects, building, building tiles, terrain, even brushes, you can make your own brushes, you can upload your own uh, your own assets for the for the uh, brushes so you can add text uh, we have some textures you can upload a new texture and it's all shareable using that shareable content feature uh, we have a library uh, and uh, which contains all of the game rules so classes subclasses races all go in the library and it's all editable or you can add add your own. Uh, and then we have even, we're, we're working on a modding system. Right now, DM Hub works very well for 5e rules, and we would like to make the modding system flexible enough to support uh, other game systems too, uh, and and we're working towards that. Um, and so if you if you know how to how to write a little bit of code, uh, we use Lua as our modding language, which is a popular language for modding games. Um, for instance, World of Warcraft as well as Roblox use Lua. We have an entire system for modding DM Hub in Lua. Uh, I may, if there's interest, I may make some some future videos about that. Uh, again, if you've made it this far, thank you, thank you for watching. Uh, we hope that you'll consider downloading DM Hub and trying it out, and we hope to see you in our Discord channel soon.